Okay, so here we go again. I'm sorry I'm a bit late. I had a lot to do. Anyway, oh, why are you unhappy? You're not exploited. I could, I guess, turn down the uh, work age. But I don't want to. I do not want to. I need to see how I do a lot before I do anything. So, um, yeah, we're still fairly in risk of having flood of the camp but uh, i quite like this area look there's so much uh, reed and 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 uh and fiber look at this i remember when they uh, introduced this the first time and i tested it we were drowning in it we had to reduce it by like 80 percent it was so much it was everywhere i think i put up a, a screenshot of my village basically surrounded by reed and fiber <laughs> it was so much but it was really fun to play with but of course that didn't last you know of course had to be decent amounts right um let me see there's been a lot of uh communication on discord with regards to calories unit portions portions kilos and my head is melting a bit because there's a little bit too much math for me <laughs> to be okay with it but uh, th there seems to be some disgruntled and i'm not sure to call it agreement or disagreement they seem to to have the maths down fairly right but they don't understand that the game is uh, it can't everything be realistic it can't be down to the millimeter or down to the milligram so there needs to be some kind of leeway for some artistic freedom for the devs seriously uh, yeah i think the most important thing we can do as players is just tell us tell them what we like and what we don't like and then give uh input on whatever we feel like as long as it belongs to the timeline and to the culture and stuff yeah not be hung up too much in details when there's plenty of trees outside yeah that's something my grandma used to say don't hang yourself off in smaller details when there are plenty of trees outside you can hang it yourself up in brutal but there you go stop overthinking basically is what she meant stop overthinking things yeah so we have plenty of food we have we still have only one pear tree and one hazelnut tree so we will see how it goes I need to rely on my hunters to do their job, but uh, I'm allowing them to hunt on everything. So I do not expect that we are be going to stay here for more than perhaps another thousand years, maybe if we're lucky. Depends on how the the waters are rising. Oh, this one moved. Yeah, I remember that now. It moved. Then we have a small one next to us. Yeah. So if that one keeps growing without moving, if we then migrate again we might not be able to get to the river because it will take the space i'm not sure i quite love that to be honest yeah we can see all the campfires going on i quite like that to be honest okay oh it's, it is pretty here isn't it i love when the when the moon is shining down the water it's so nice i really like that so for me, for me personally, this game is not about, well, you know, winning or losing or reaching an, e an end. It's more about trying to imitate what we know via history and stuff like that, that our ancestors did. And I think the game uh, has, has emulated that to a very, very decent degree. I mean, as far as you can go with what they have at the moment and what is actually possible to do in a game so yeah so definitely this game is not for the impatient players and those that has no interest in either paleology paleontology or archaeology or anthropology or history of any kind it is not for you you know you can perhaps play it for three four hours and play through it and then you're bored and move on to a game where you can kill stuff you know blood gore and stuff but the devs have already now made the public on Discord that we are going to get predators. It has already been designed. Yes, we have already designed it and it's going to be so good. There's going to be adrenaline kicks, blood, guts, gore, grief, anger and fear. Oh yes, and not everything is going to be good. Do not think that everything is going to be good. Just saying. There will be some nasty surprises. Some nasty surprises. 
<laughs> Nasty. But yeah, we did need a bit of, 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 of blood and guts, to be honest, in the game, because that also belongs to the human history, yeah? It's not like we had a very peaceful community at all times. Now, there was this one uh, writer, I can't remember who, who it is, I read about it a long time ago. He gave out a book with the, uh, where some of his um, quotes were, uh, not in Asia were humans born, nor in innocence. So it just tells us that we have kind of been a fairly brutal race since the start of it. Of course, controversially, nobody can say that this is for sure, this and this and this, but of course there were conflict. It had to be. There are always conflicts. We can see that today as well. The less food, the more conflict. The more food, the less conflict. It's weird, isn't it? No, it's not. It's completely, completely ra rational that... The less food you have, the more you fight to keep it. It's just the way it is. It's, it's pure survival. That's basically what everything boils down to. And this is what kept our ancestor, ancestors going and developing better ways to survive. Because they wanted to survive. The, the survival instinct is so strong that we do this. And then you have evolution, of course, that helps you out with changing your DNA as the centuries go by. And the bigger you are, the longer it takes before you change. Which is also why, uh, controversially, a lot of uh, the uh, smaller animals can change over just a few years, depending on the environment. And this is, uh, this is uh, survival of the fittest. The adaptation is not who's the strongest. It's not who's the smartest or fastest. It's, it, it is who can adapt the best. And that is, uh, without any argument, the reason we have survival so high in humans. Just imagine all the hundreds of thousands that we do not know about of this subspecies or other species or pre species that came before the Homo sapiens sapiens sapiens, which is what we are. Are we sapiens times three? I think so. Or is it sapiens times two? It might be times two. But if you consider when we when we split from apes, we became hominids and the others were, I can't remember the word. Remember uh, that it's not a straight line, you know, from Homo erectus, blah, 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 and down there. It is a branch of gazillion branches per branch. I exaggerate to make a point. It's not gazillion. It's many. It's many. How many? We don't know. But we do know that it's not a straight line. Just let, agree to that immediately. So I would be really interested in having a uh, anthropologist with me making a video like this to to talk about events that we have in the game that he can explain as an anthropologist i can explain a lot of it as evolutionary psychology but i cannot uh, do, delve into the deeper parts of anthropology because i just do not have the competence i do not have the insight nor the education so that would be really interesting if I could find that. I have a friend who is a paleo uh, forensic anthropologist, <laughs> but uh, he is in Australia, so it's a bit, he's uh, a bit busy as well. And uh, I'm not sure if his wife would be happy with him spending hours with me on Discord on a game. <laughs> it's not really, yeah. Anyway, I find this game so teaching that I don't care what people say. Oh, you're playing games. Oh, you're playing computer games. What are you, five? Like, really? Do you think that's what it is? Yeah. And besides, it has been proven again and again that computer games helps kids in more than one area. Plus, it has been disproven again and again that it causes violence or outrageous behavior. It's just not um, not to agreeing with the, the facts that we see after 10, 20, 30 years of usage. It's just not not okay. What we have is an increased insight in all ages. We have increased intelligence, not always a positive thing because anxiety and depression tends to follow because people overthink everything. Brain has so many paths that anxiety is a companion constantly with people who think a lot. So, yeah. There was this one colleague of mine who said that the only patient he had never had that um, did not have anxiety were the ones that had uh, were not stupid but they didn't uh, uh, sit down and overthink things they weren't reflectors they did not reflect they just had that the it is what it is uh, attitude and in many cases this is actually a lot more healthy 
than sitting and overthinking and creating scenarios in your head that will never happen. This is so typical. I see it so many times. And guess what? We all can do it. But when it takes over our daily lives, then we really should grow a few more fucks in our garden and give give out some fucks. Don't edit out my fucks, Lariel. Poor editor who is <laughs> so stressed when I do videos. Because that's what we need to give. We need to give lesser Fs, seriously, on a lot of things. We cannot change people. We cannot demand people to change. And also one thing that I need to have said, uh, as I keep saying it to all my friends. I do not see family as the thickest. I see those who are with you in good and bad are the thickest. Because, uh, yeah, it's not always that family is good for you. Just You're not alone if you're sitting on that chair. Trust me. We are many, many who has issue with some some of our families and choose to not be so much around them. You know, society accepts so little that you are different from your family, that you must be with your family instead of seeking people that you feel more comfortable with, you know? So, yeah. Anyway, what else have we been doing on Discord? Yeah, the food stuff, yeah. So, uh, all of the bugs are sorted in testing, absolutely. So, now we're just working on the last uh, piece before the, the hotfix comes out. It will either be today or even tomorrow. It was supposed to be the other day, but I found a new bug. I'm sorry. You know when updates are late, it's my fault. It's always my fault because I find stuff that is not okay to release. Um... So yeah, I do not want a repetition of the patch that is currently out where I did not have time to test. And by the time I was home again, the test, the, the patch was out and then I did my testing. I of course found everything that all players found later anyway. But of course uh, the devs were sick, they were flattened out with Covid so it was several days where they couldn't work. Yeah, so that was a really bad snag for the game and <laughs> for everyone working on it and those playing on it of course. For you players who couldn't play without people dying in the corners and the edges and <laughs> it was a really nasty bug that it, it you know it took uh, it took a short time to fix but it took a, 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 a lot of people to see it and uh, they weren't happy all of them well it's what it is when you have a game you you uh, you can have bugs it is what it is especially when a game is constantly in development Right, so how are we doing with sleeping arrangements? No, we lack quite a few. So instead of babbling all this time, I should really get going and building more. So let's build more of these. I'm going to build a little bit out because we're going to have um, reed huts closer to the fireplace, closer to the focal point where people sit and eat and gather. There you go, so let's get two up in one. Wait a minute, where's my builder? It's weird when they are at the bottom of the, the, the list. They're normally on the top, aren't they? So that's with the usual. The, uh, the positioning is fluid, but I have asked for it to be static and to be movable by player. So if we grab one, then we can drag it up and down, you know? So the devs have noted that down, and uh, I think we're going to get that uh, in the future. But yeah, back to Predators, which devs have announced is coming. So what we have done in, in testing at the moment is only the theory, only the, the, the design and the discussion about who should do what, when should they do it and how should it be the outcome, what's the outcome and, and stuff like that and all the details for everything because every little thing needs to be designed for this and this and this and this factor and this factor and this factor and this factor and luckily i'm just a tester so i don't have to code anything oh my goodness i'm on holiday in comparison to the devs seriously and um, <laughs> so there are several going to be several types of predators not only one we already had for almost a year now we've had some of the predators in game to test behavior, to test the animation, blah, 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 and these things. Uh, so, so what we do need though, is to implement behavior. Behavior is going to take a while. That's going to take several months, I'm sure of it, because it's not only one or two or three predators or four predators, there are plenty predators. We might not um, release them all in one go, but I do believe we get at least four, at least four in one go. And that's going to be a grand update, a really big one. Uh, but the devs have been working on it for a long time already. Um, I only came in the last few months 
with going over their design, giving my ideas and my corrections and, and you know, kind of telling them what will happen if this and this happens, if we do this and this, then this and this will happen and stuff like that. So yeah, that's going to be really interesting. And um, uh, there are several things boiling as well in the devs kitchen. Um, not sure how much I can talk about it, but uh, after the um, continental biome, biome, here we go again, biome patch, which is almost done. And just a few more weeks i think not sure on that so do not take my word for absolute truth uh, and then we're going to start predators so predators will start within the month and never has it been more important that you guys give your suggestions to the devs about behavior from both predators from humans from environment uh, things to add new to the game, things that will help the player, make it more immersiveness for the player, but also not too much micromanagement. You know, there are so many things to consider because there are so many different play player types that we need to please. I'm not sure we can ever do that though, you know? So I think the devs have done a smart thing by staying on the realistic, what can we prove uh, line where we don't add fantasy and, and everything just because we want all the fantasy to make the game more interesting or more more bloody or, or whatever reason we might have. So I think uh, placing the ledge on realistic should never be changed in my opinion. But of course you can't have it directly same as a real life that will never happen. I mean it's a game. You code and you code and you code to try to get it as equal as possible but you're not you're not always going to, to, to manage it. Well that's it. How many are we? We are 33. What are we running out of? Boars, wild boars. Yeah, I'm not sad about that because they eat like mad. They eat so much. But you know what? So does cattle and horses. But I don't want to kill the horses. We don't want to kill the horses, no! I still struggle a bit with, with killing the wild dogs. I struggle with killing the horses. I struggle with killing the cattle. The only thing I'm fairly okay with is, are the deer and the hares. The rats, I don't care, you know? But I didn't like to kill the rats uh, or the, the, the hares either when I started, or the deer. I didn't kill anything when we started to get hunting, and I didn't want to. It's a kind of desensitizing thing you need to desensitize yourself and not look at it i just didn't look at the hunters when they went to kill something i needed even if it was a, a cow or, or a horse because when we needed the food we needed the food and this is what our ancestors did as well so here the, the emulation is perfect but we are sitting here with modern minds aren't we we don't eat our horses you know we don't eat our rabbits anymore we do eat cattle, but we don't kill them ourselves. You know, it's really simple for us to sit in a kitchen table and having a burger where we are not the one who had to kill the animal. Yeah? It's easy to be cocky then, isn't it? Yeah, just go to the supermarket and buy some minced meat and make your own burgers, no problem. I would, I would like to see how many became vegan after they had to do the slaughtering and killing themselves. Yeah? Not so cocky then. I used to work as a steriliser in a, a slaughterhouse. I, I loved every moment of it, not because it was a slaughterhouse, but because it was very tedious work, very precise work. If you made mistake, you could kill people. So I, I liked that because there was a responsibility I wanted. So um, the slaughter dudes, they only worked for like 14 days and then they were swapped out. They were not allowed to work for so so many weeks after they had been doing a certain amount of time with slaughtering because they are killing animals constantly every day all day and that takes on you it does something to the human being it ruins us it really ruins us to kill so uh, we can be cocky when we sit on the kitchen table with a burger but uh, there will be a lot of vegans if they had to work in a slaughterhouse yep because we are too spoiled to realize how valuable animals are to keep us alive but again how realistic is that today compared to 5,000 years ago not very we don't need animals to survive this is the thing we choose to do it and I would be surprised if like in a thousand years 500 years even or even less nobody is really going to eat any meat because we don't have to we have several laboratories that grow uh, meat from a cell no need to torture and kill animals but see of course no I, I love bacon I'm not a vegetarian 
but I'm not fond of the, the meat taste as such, but I do like bacon, so if it hadn't been for bacon and fish, I would probably be a vegetarian, very likely. So yeah, I'm not the, the best to talk, can't be hypocritical here because that's exactly what it is when I say we need to eat less meat when I eat meat myself. <clears throat> if I cannot walk the walk, I should not talk to talk. But there you go. It's a human fallacy we can never get rid of, I'm afraid. <laughs> we will always have this happening, won't we? <laughs> yeah. The thing is, if you are aware of it, you tend to do less of it or make, make people aware that you are aware, you know. And that kind of uh, makes it a little bit more um, acceptable that you know you have your flaws. You talk about your flaws, but you can't help them at the moment. Or or you don't have the, the will to help them at the moment. Because I don't want to stop eating bacon, but I do not want to kill the pig. You know, this double standard is uh, difficult to accept, but I have it. I cannot deny it. Right, so we have been there quite a while now, and why are we not flooding? I'm going to see how much in the water out of camp is. We have, see, we have, we have, we have see the, look at these. Look how much in the water they are. <laughs> so they're going to, they're going to have to move soon, I'm sure of it. I could try to, to raid them and scare them off. I should perhaps try to raid this one to scare, scare these off as well. Look how close they are, seriously? The, like these two are kind of on top of each other. And then we have us, little puny, puny tribe here. Yeah. Let's have a look. Look, look how well the, uh, the pets are coming. That's more than one pet tree, isn't it? Why is there so many? Have they grown up? Oh no, there's not more now. They have gathered them all in, in one month. Could you get like 60 in two two months or so? Or is it 30 and then we got another tree instead? Okay, so who remember where it was? It was a tree over here somewhere, wasn't it guys? It was, I know it was. I just, but where, where was it? Oh, did I reach the end there? Of course I did. Yeah. Have you always noticed that the pear trees are just as well on the edge as they are anywhere else? It's like the desert done it on purpose to torture us. I'm telling you. Oh, those are ferns. Those ferns keep fooling me. I keep thinking it's rosehip bushes. Or rosehips. Lots of ferns. They do nothing. They are like the weed. The weed. Okay, now of course I can't find it. Wait a minute. Where did you come from? Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, so they fixed also that the hunters um, did not want to go to the edge to hunt because what happened, uh, I figured it out, what happened is that uh, when dawn comes and system grants you tasks, they will grant you tasks based on current position of prey. And what we forgot as players, or at least I forgot, I didn't remember, was that the lower work hours we have, the more the prey can move away. So by the time work hours got ticked in, the prey was so far gone that the uh, task calculation system denied the hunters access to the animals. But the dawn system did not refresh during day. It only started at dawn and did nothing else until evening came and work hours was over. And that was that bug. So that has been sorted as well. See, there's, <laughs> there's an explanation for everything that happens in game. And uh, as a tester, it, it, is, can be, it can be difficult to find the reason because I have zero coding knowledge. I have no programming knowledge, but I do have a fair good knowledge of the game and how things work, the mechanics. Uh, so I, I managed to figure that out and inform that this was likely what was going on. So that has been done. Of course, I made suggestions about how to improve it. Of course, my suggestion was that uh, the dawn tasks should instead be uh, coupled to when work hours started. Yeah, because that will solve the problem. Yeah. Also, dynamic updates during the day would do the trick. So I don't know which one of my suggestions the devs did, or if they did something completely different, they probably did something much smarter than what I could come up with. It is sorted. Anyway. Anyway. 
Yeah, and then this starvation thing also uh, is uh, two-faceted. It's not only one thing, because I have reported about this before, where very young children, weak children and elders that are about to die, they have so low fitness that the first hit of starvation or hunger can kill them. So they don't die from starvation, they die from that the first tick of being hunger is too high in comparison to their fitness. And I have let the devs know this, so uh, now we'll see how much they can adjust that. But they have fixed the bug where they stood on the edge and starved to death, because that's just stupid. That's just stupid. Yeah, so that is fixed. Yeah. Let's see. So now all of them have housing. So a thing that I see some players do not always remember is that uh, you don't need uh, you don't need 50 pairs for 50 people. You can easily have five pairs and five bread and five hazelnut and five fish, blah, 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 as long as the total tally feeds your tribe per day. And that's it. That's all you need to worry about. You don't need 500 hazelnuts in, in a 20-man tribe. That is just ridiculous. So this is why I have suggested to the devs that we shall... Uh, yeah, I know you guys are probably going to be really angry with me when I'm saying this. But this is what I would like. I would like all food in the Mesolithic timeline to be cut in another 50% half. Yeah, I'm, I'm quiet because I'm expecting a reaction. Oh, Lily, how could you? How could you? Bad Lily. But that's what I have suggested. I'm not sure I'm going to get my will. But I hope I am. See, see, what I want is that on hardcore, I only want people who knows exactly what they're doing in the game to succeed with high population. So I discourage any new beginners or intermediate beginners uh, players as well to go do hardcore high up north. It's, um, it's supposed to be in the game, we are supposed to cover the needs of difficulties for all types of players. And at the moment, I feel everything is too easy. It's so easy, everyone can do it, and then we become bored. We don't have a proper challenge. Yeah? So I would like the, the difficulties to be much more different. Like, expert is not expert, it's normal. I wanted to call it normal, and devs did not, because of psychology. They wanted people to think, okay, now I'm an expert, I've played a bit in beginners, now I'm an expert, you know what I mean? And I don't agree with that, it should be normal. Then they can have a, a different uh, difficulty after normal called expert. And then you have hardcore, and then I want my own version of hardcore to be called godlike. Where only one or two people can actually do it, and you have to play a lot to manage it. Or have a very good insight in the game, the game and policies and people in their attributes, their grades, the environment behavior, the every AI behavior, each and every AI behavior, and know all the ins and outs and all the hidden events, which I do. I also know a lot of exploits that I haven't told the devs. <laughs> I can show you one another day, not today. I'm going to show you one. It's a lifesaver if you're moving far, far away. Far, far away. See how intricate they are. I told I told my cat a ghost story the other day. <laughs> and yeah, and the cat was very interested. And then and then I had the scared voice. His eyes became bigger. <laughs> I think I'm going to record when I'm telling a ghost story to my cats. I'm so weird. What's wrong with me? <laughs> anyway, let's see what else. Oh wait, what's your real problem? You have to sleep in the open. Oh wait, is this, uh, yeah, 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 this is the bug that they are also fixed in uh, testing. The bugs where they are still sleeping, uh, not in the huts, but everywhere else. So yeah, let me see what we've got. Um, the work, oh, absolutely, aren't I? the workaround for this is to remove the first um, poor housing you place down. Because when you do that, then you can... Uh, have the rest of them sleep in, in proper housing. So we had, what did we have? Well, this one wasn't first, was it? These were first. These guys were first. So if we delete these two, then they will sleep uh, no longer in the open. But I'm going to get down another one of these before I do that. 
Well, this is a, a, a workaround I found out as I was testing the bug to figure out what was going on. Oh, yeah, I did, did figure out what was going on. And, uh, and then I realized we had a workaround that I could tell to players who were struggling with this. And uh, it doesn't always happen though. It's, it's a bit random, which is really, really, really odd. And it also makes the, the, the reproduction uh, of it difficult because you never know if you want to get it. You can spend days on it and not get it. And then suddenly you get it on the first try, you know. It's just how it is with testing. It, it does or it doesn't. If it's static, nothing is better. We never have issues with following any static bugs. But random bugs and rare random bugs are the worst thing ever. So the longest living bug we have that is rare and random is the double uh, locality bug. I don't know if any of you have ever had it. I have had it roughly six times in the three years I've been playing, in the 14,000 plus hours I have been playing and I've had a lot of tribes. I've had it roughly six times. I report it each and every time, but we cannot figure it out. The bug is when you land in a locality, you can at times have two localities on top of each other on different heights. It's the weirdest thing Ever. Wait till the, the rain was gone. I put up the work hours for a while because I see we have very little food and added a few more fishermen. I think I'm gonna add more for these to do as well. Let's get going guys. Because we have very little food left. Okay. <clears throat> oh we can make baskets. We have we have 24 of them, we can make a basket with some fish, I think. Yeah. What about the fish? <clears throat> anyway, yeah, the food is way too low. Why did I wait so long? Okay, let's uh, do a bit extra. I'm gonna take away those. So we get proper food in. See if these doesn't. Oh, he has increased in knowledge. Yeah, whoever has increased in knowledge, I take uh, from now on. And I will. Um, why are you leaving? Are you hungry? Oh God! Yeah, I was way too late getting food. What a pity! Oh, I thought he left, but he died. Uh oh! Uh oh! This is what you get when you babble too much and don't pay attention. How are we doing with grace? Right, get going guys. Oh, someone needs to come feed this guy. Holy crap, he doesn't have a lot of health left. Oof. He really should eat. This is the thing with this patch as well. They don't eat when they should. Like now there is food, but he's still not eating. So what I'm going to do is this. See if he will eat from the dryer. Otherwise, he's gonna die. He only had 16 health left, 17. And he's still not eating. So this is one of the, the bugs that we had, that even if there's food in camp, you're not seeing them eating. Like now, he went to bed without eating, even though there's food. But he's gonna die due to this bug. So it, it's a bit pity when the bugs are affecting gameplay that much. But I might actually have avoided it if I did not have so low food stocks for a day or so. But yeah, no, he's gonna die in the morning, I think. I think. Just have to wait and see. But I'm building more graves, because uh, he might not be the only one having this bug. Older people and children not dying like fly stupid is a uh, trademark of this, this bug. But it's fixed in testing, I have no more problems in testing. So that's good. Oh yeah, they finished this one too and both these. That means we can pause these. So that nobody will sleep out in the open anymore. Because this is a workaround that I figured out when I was testing it. 
that uh, if you remove the first shitty houses you place down, then they will sleep where they should most of the time. It's a bug, so it, it does throw you for a bit of a, a loop every now and then. <laughs> so I understand that a lot of you guys want to talk about the predators, but I can't reveal too much, much more than I have done. And I will probably get my ass handed to me by the devs, so I should be careful. But of course there will be more food. The biome, the continental biome, which is going to be finished in a few weeks, contains at least three more food types. Not crops this time. Yet. But one of them, actually four more food types, or maybe more. One of them will become a crop. Just saying. But not now. And I think one of them also will become uh, an orchard. I think. Yeah, I think. We will have to wait and see, but that's uh, what I remember. What is it with all this rain? I'm going to turn down the sound on effects because it's just so loud. Like that, hopefully that is a bit better. It's raining so much here, isn't it? Because now we have caused these and we still don't have a blue house, which means we can, in theory, dismantle these and reuse the materials they give. Okay, so now we have better food. Oh, we have way too many. Yeah, I'm going to cut down to two again on the hunters. And I'm going to cut down to... How many can I do that? I could probably come do three on the fishermen. How many are we now in the, in the camp? 37. Oops, not you. But you could probably do 50. And activate this one again. Because if you, if you uh, dry it, uh, it becomes lower in weight. But you can actually get more calories due to it. So a kilo of raw has, uh, oh, what was the calories? I don't remember. But when you dry them, the calories goes down, not because the the, the calories disappear, but also, first of all, because uh, it takes less energy for humans to, to eat them. And then because the weight it goes down to 75 grams instead of 750 grams per kilo. So there, there's some maths going on there. And also, yeah, I think we talked about bread the last time. I'm not going to harp on about it. Yeah, so uh, I lost one to famine. He initially left, but he died before he could leave the map. So that's a bit sad. So these are free to be used. Yeah. Oops, sorry. Oh, I'm gonna have angry people now. Aren't I? <laughs> well, it's only for a few sleeps. That should be alright for a few sleeps, except those that are really weak and stuff. So now we should not have anyone sleeping out in the open because we've removed all the bad housing. So now we also got Reed Hut showing up, which we really should get going with. Uh, is it this one? No. Who is it? I have to make another group for those. I thought I already had one, but alas, I do not. There was one. There was one in camp. So they limit now? That's because it wasn't one. There you go. Right. We, in theory, don't need that one either. Let's see if we lack if I do this. We don't. There you go. Oh, I put... I put pause. I put pause on the game. It's... It's... <laughs> Did you guys see that? I put pause on the game instead of pause on the stone house. And so then we lack. Okay, so then I'm doing this. Then we should be okay again, I think. I hope. 
No? No, okay. What the fuck? What did I just do? Oh, now it's yellow. What is this? Is there something needing repairs? Dear lord, shouldn't be legal to be that senile. It's <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna post this hut. There you go. <laughs> oh, yeah. How are we doing with food? I cannot slack on it. 16, 47. Yeah, we're good. Uh, you can probably go down to two. No place. And you guys can stay at two. I'm also going to entail these. Right. So, uh, since we have food for a few days, I'm going to abuse the system a bit. Don't tell anyone. Gonna do this. We're gonna do this just for a moment. Ta da! And go. Should have done it before work was given out, and they would all all run to it. But this is not something I recommend for new players to do, unless you you know what you're doing, and if you're going to migrate anyway, because then it doesn't matter if you're killing saplings or the young young ones. Because I'm pretty sure we are going. I'm gonna have to to migrate soon anyway. So we need 75 to get started and what do you know here we go <clears throat> so let's get our first reed house reed hut there you go oops and now we can okay sorry two left we can do this and this before they get really annoyed with me ta-da that's how you can do it. It's not how you're supposed to do it, but you do have the tools to do it. And if you know what you're doing, go for it. I mean, if you're going to migrate anyway, do as you see fit. It's quite simple. <laughs> okay. Should I perhaps give them another person to help them out or two? Because we are, after all, Almost 40 people, so I can spare another one. Um, I might want to increase stuff here to keep them occupied. Yeah, that should do it. Wait a minute, what are you guys doing? Oh, you're already on the sticks on the run. Okay, yeah, that's fine. It's going to be a few thousand years, a few more millennia before we can consider getting enough uh, Neolithic influence to get farms and animals. But then for sure we won't have to, to move anymore, to migrate. I just need to make sure I'm not overdoing stuff here because that can easily happen. Oh, you're not going to hunt a pregnant deer. Are you serious? I hate when they do this. It actually is really annoying when they go for pregnant large animals because the system, the area of effect system is not covering the entire map. It is only covering a certain area from camp. And if we don't have the correct age and stuff inside that, then system goes to the next, which is adult and old females. And then the next, which is pregnant females. And then the next, which is kids. I wish they would do it on the entire map. I guess the frames would be minus 10 if we did. I don't know how it works. I have asked if we could have it increased. So we have had it increased at least twice as long as I've been playing because I've been complaining about it when the hunters are going for pregnant females. Because system is built, it is coded to first go for old males, then old females, then adult males, adult females, then pregnant females, then kids. So the reason why they go for pregnant females when we know there are other old animals further away is because they are further away. Because the area of effect where system targets a task is not big enough. Yeah, I will probably continue to nag on the, the devs to have the entire map. But, but there must be a reason why they're not doing it. Because I do not understand, if it's not from a performance view, why they would not do it. Yeah, does that make sense? You'd cover, cover the map. 
take all old first. I mean, they did that no matter how many days they have to go on. They don't hunt kids. They don't kill pregnant animals. They're killing their future food. To me, this is logic. Yeah. Okay, let's see. What else have we been doing in testing? There's been some weird crashes. Some people have had weird crashes with their uh, uh, raider and trader groups, and I figured out why. Because, and I, I only needed to play very weirdly to figure it out. See, what happened was that when people made their mind up to uh, change the work spot as soon as the groups got out into regional map, the game would crash because then you threw the people into limbo. Because you were not in local and they were disallowed in regional, so where would they go? They crashed. Ta-da! Problem solved. <laughs> they have sold it the second you realized what it was. <laughs> they were in limbo. Uh, yeah, so that was sold as well. So whoever did that kept changing the work spots and stuff. You can no longer do that. So you will no longer have the opportunity to chuck people into limbo. Although I would love to have the opportunity to chuck divas of the tribe into limbo without crashing the game. Just saying. <laughs> so yeah that sorted it so now we have one of those but we are going to make one more to have more people uh, get rid of any kind of unrest which also means that i can start to abuse them a little bit with regards to work hours because if you manage to get rid of all other unrests and only have like one and that can be work hours but remember work hours will be incrementally increasing depending on how high it is so you won't get away with having having high work hours for everyone year after year after year well maybe on beginners you can get away with quite a lot on hardcore you're going to get whacked down after just a few months by those with bad grades we are talking about that right now in testing how we're doing it and i have stipulated some numbers i would like to see for hardcore and then the devs will decide of course uh, the the beginners and the expert and the overall anyway because whatever i say is just a suggestion of course so yeah i want it harder i don't want it easier beginners can have all the easy they want sure learning curve with lots of space for experimenting and failing and learning fine that is perfect but i think hardcore should be really punishing on all areas including unrest it is too easy as it is now i can manipulate the tribe to be on high work hours almost all the time based on how i work with my unrest on other areas granted this is how this is the tools you have been given by the game but it also makes that people who have higher insight have played for a long time and know more much more likely to use these kinds of, of easy ways out instead of playing as intended so yeah so this game is going to be simplified but made harder so less micromanagement but also less slacking yeah but of course if you don't if you don't like the hardship you don't have to play hardcore Hardcore only has a small niche of player in its players that do it anyway, because it's uh, unreasonable. <laughs> I mean, who leaves the tribe after two months of having to, to work a few extra hours? Nobody does that in, in the timeline. It doesn't belong to the timeline, but it, we need to make it so that it fits to a game. You know, we can't have it exactly 100% game versus reality, reality versus game, precisely as it is in one to the next. It just doesn't work. And I do see a few players who struggle with this concept that we must do something different on some areas, you know. But as long as the essence is the same, I am okay with it. Of course, there are, are things that doesn't belong anywhere, like, for instance, that when they're dying from starvation in front of a, of a food bush. What the heck? Nobody would do that. They would eat. They would eat the bush as well. They would eat the bush too. <laughs> Not only the fruits. They would eat. But of course, if we do that, then the game will play itself, won't it? You don't have to worry about getting food. They will eat when they're hungry. They'll go it in the forest to find it themselves. So there needs to be uh, some kind of, of a logic deduction here of why things are the way they are. We want the game, not the video to watch. 
we're not watching a video, are we? No, we're playing a game. So I definitely understand that from from a point of view of a player as well as a tester. I'm not a, def a de developer, obviously, but I definitely understand the point they have made by making it the way they have. Yeah. Let's see. So we have a fairly happy tribe. I need to pay attention to food. Uh, five, and we have many dry. Do we have four? So uh, let's not be too cocky. Wait a minute. We are going into season for both pears and hazelnuts, so they should come in in fairly good amounts. Um, but did this place not have any? Do you guys remember if it had any rose hips? It might not. You might not have any because you're not guaranteed anything because you have the table of appropriate plant life and appropriate uh, prey animal life but this is the prevalence and this is the density that is the randomized part that your seed even though it has all the appropriate mathematicals for getting all types of food all types of animals you don't necessarily get them you know, because this locality might not even have them, even though they are appropriate to the area. This is a part of the randomness that is supposed to emulate realistic conditions. Because in real life as well, you will go to a hill and find a hazelnut tree, but you will go to the next hill and find none. So this makes sense as well, and uh, that that shall never change. If 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 it's changed because players are complaining that they can't get this and can't get that, I will be really annoyed, I'm really really annoyed, because then they will take away the realism. Absolutely not okay, and they would reduce the replayability of the game to a, a point where I actually fear that I would be bored. And the day I am bored, that's the day I will move on, and I will no longer bother to play. Then I will move on to something that takes my my uh, brain again to keep me occupied with something that is challenging and this is this is not only a, a you know a, a lily issue this is it's something that a lot of players sit back and feel that if it gets too boring why would they play you know we move on to something that gives us a thrill again something that we enjoy doing again or even though i love the concept of the game of everything but if they're going to remove the replayability then everything will be the same and that is the worst thing you can possibly do to any game so that will never happen and whoever tries to force the, the devs with this suggestion to make it so that everything is the same I will whoop your ass <laughs> I will find you and I will whoop your ass <laughs> oh, yeah that's a promise I was I wanted to play Liam Neeson when he said I will find you and I will kill you well I'm terrified of copyright issues so I'm not gonna do that <laughs> but I got my eyes on you I will find out who you are if you ever just suggest it I will figure you out <laughs> I will come for you oh brothers yeah <laughs> so now we are okay 6k so we're gonna go down to 5k in just a few sleeps and then we are going to start seeing um we won't see it but i know there will be there will be a small influence from neolithic starting already around 5k bc and that means that we have perhaps a millennia and maybe two and then we are almost guaranteed to get uh, um, full neolithic migrants meaning farms and of course livestock so I'm, I'm also, I'm, I was expecting any day to have to move on. We are in the ocean. Look at it. Look, we are in the water. Oh, and these have moved. See, they have moved over here, I think. No, it was that weird name they had. A long, long ass name. What is it? Do you guys remember the name? I think. No, I don't remember the name. They moved because they were here, weren't they? And then someone here has moved as well. Okay, what? I don't mind being the same place if, if I don't cock up the locality with messing up the food or anything. So I need to be better at keeping an eye on the food here because I had a, a child starve to death because I wasn't paying attention. I was babbling along about some bugs. Right. Okay, so what else are we discussing in uh, in 
in, in uh, testing. Uh, yeah, the, the unrest is going to be harsher for uh, expert and hardcore is going to be fairly lenient for the beginners and sandbox of course is going to be a joke. But sandbox is for those who just want to build, you know, don't want the gameplay, just build. And I, I do that every now and then as well, no problem. But this is the thing that I like so much about having different difficulties is that you cater to more than one type of player style. You cater to more than one age group and to, to more than and one type of how people want to use uh, the game. What, what is their agenda with the game, you know? Is it to actually walk in the ancestors' footsteps or just to have a building game, a city builder game? Is that it? You know, we're all so different and, and everything is being catered for to the best of the devs' abilities, of course. They can't walk on water, but I promise you that it's not because they cannot swim. Okay, so let's be, we need to be realistic in what can actually be done with one and a half programmer. <laughs> I think they're working so hard, non-stop. Yeah, so this is something they really want. I just, I just wish more players were aware of how much work the devs are actually doing. And me, I'm also doing art ton of work. I mean, if you guys could see the testing channels and everything that I report for every patch point, you would think it was four people doing it, but it isn't. It's just me. I'm not the only tester, but I'm the only really um, active tester that has the time to, to go over everything. Why are you guys unhappy? Oh, wait, did I have increased time? No, I didn't. What's wrong with you? You will go eat then. Oh, crikey, here I go again, babbling along. Let's do a bit of exaggerated here. And then let's remove the um, red one. And you guys can go up to eight as well. And you are going to remove those. Go, go, go. Because, yeah, we need to not have people start to death because I talk too much. You see, now that uh, we deleted the two worst uh, pelt huts, the two huts we had here, we no longer have anyone sleeping in the open. But this is a workaround until the patch is out, the new patch. But it will be either today or tomorrow, depending on what I find. Because I'm still testing a few things, going over, you know, crossing the, the, the I's and, and, you know, crossing the T's and dotting the I's. Uh, because we don't want it like we had it last time. Because last patch, it was released with bugs that I didn't have time to test because I wasn't home. And I still feel guilty about that, to be honest. It's really weird. I shouldn't feel guilty because uh, it should not have been released because I hadn't tested it. But um, yeah, I don't think I screamed loud enough to say, oh, we cannot release yet because I didn't know that there will still be bugs there because I wasn't home to test it. Yeah, it, it bothers me that I, uh, that I didn't have time to test it. It really bothers me because now, of course, the patch was released and the community suffered their consequences because there were bugs that needed to be sorted. And they are now, so it would have been released earlier, but I kept finding stuff that needed to be done. So when this patch now coming out, it'll be probably patch 14, because I've already done like six, 16, 16 or something in the last week alone. Yeah. 14, I think it will be 0.14 coming out or maybe 0.15 if I find more tomorrow and then everything will be sorted there will be no no big bugs nothing that will ruin gameplay because if there's something ruining gameplay I find it immediately and uh, get it sorted well, this is one of the things I really like about the devs that they give me the opportunity to have this and not decision making but that when I recommend to not release due to this and this and this they tend to listen because if it is a gameplay issue, then it's not only me who will have it, you know, everyone will have it. So, of course, any good devs would listen to their develop their uh, testers when testers said this, this bug is too severe to be released. You know, the odd visual bug and the odd, odd thing here and there that doesn't really affect gameplay as such is fine. But the ones that everyone will be affected by is never okay to release. And that unfortunately happened in the patch we are playing at the moment in public because I was not home to test. 
So I won't have that happening again. Just saying. So if there are any big gameplay bugs now after this patch coming, that is down to me not doing a proper job. Not the devs, but me. Do, do, do. Okay, are they getting food or not? Okay, so... You guys can go down to one now. Mm -hmm. so these are for the pass, okay. Uh, yeah, you guys can go down to two. Yeah, because we don't need what we need food. So that's what we need above anything. So that people go into the uh, food group. Yeah. Okay. I think that's basically what we have been talking about. Yeah, they, we have also... I did a bit of testing on the pairs extra for the patch that is public now. And... Um, in most areas there are very rich amounts coming from the pear tree so uh, they have been reduced by roughly 30 ish percent it's not going to make a huge impact on beginners because you're already drowning in food anyway it will however make a big impact on hardcore which is exactly what i wanted yeah oh so little food Oh god, here we go again with the bug. I need to do this and then just wait till the animals come in to... Uh, I can do six. Wait till the animals come into range for the um, dawn tasks to see it. And then hopefully... Oops, sorry. Yeah, I need to be careful with the work. I keep forgetting the work hours. Oh. If I continue to do that after next patch is out, which has a much more stricter uh, work hour um, reaction in hardcore uh, tribes, I will have a lot of failures and uh, I will have no, no excuse because I know about it already now because I'm testing it now. I'm testing it now. I've been testing it for several days, so I have no excuse, <laughs> but I will probably cock up a lot of times, even though I've known about it for weeks. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, for me, replayability in the game is super important and that we have uh, the ability to do things different and not only have it the same way. Because that is, when it gets monotonous, then I fall asleep and I can't have that. Then I will seek other games that will give me what I want. And yeah, so there. I think that's the thing with most people. If it gets too boring, too monotonous, then it doesn't give them what they want so you know after a hard days of work you want to relax with stuff you want to have some fun whether it's with a video game or watching a movie with your other half or your kids or whatever it is we all have what we enjoy doing and i enjoy doing games when i'm not uh, doing other things you know it's my free time and i will do as i see fit i'm either gardening or i'm playing games or i'm doing stuff for my cats and that's it my kittens <laughs> my cats fixing up the house you know, the chores in the house, it's not really for me any work. It's not work for me. It's just things you do to have a good house, have a nice house, be healthy, you know, be happy in your house. But the gaming, that's something I do to relax, to just almost said escape real life. But it kind of is for me. It's a bit of an escape from, from real life and do other things. Use your imagination and then, yeah. It's, for me, it's therapeutic. This game is my therapy. So, because you know, we are not all the same. We, we don't seek all the time the same things as each other. Uh, even if we at times like the same things and do the same thing, it doesn't mean we will forever be on the same path. I mean, next week I might spend the entire week in my garden instead of, garden, or instead of gaming. It depends on what you want, your state of mind. How do you feel? What do you feel up to? You know, we are complicated creatures and that's just the way it is. So this is a game that gives me what I want all the time. Especially since I am a tester and I test 
things as they come. So I'm constantly having new things to do. There's just no time to be bored. I don't think in the three years I've been playing and testing, I have not been bored once. Not once. And I play every day. Every day. You know, I've been playing World of Warcraft since it came out in 2004. And I'm still not bored of World of Warcraft either because they keep adding stuff, they keep getting new stuff and because you have so much to choose from in the game you can't possibly in a gazillion years reach over everything. Not gonna happen! Uh, those, These two games are the games I play now and have played for the last 20 years. I've played World of Warcraft for 20 years. So there, yeah? Right, so now we are almost mid 5k BC, so we should start uh, getting some Neolithic, Neolithic migrants. And then I assume, I estimate, by next playthrough of this tribe, if I haven't killed them already, which could easily happen, let's not be cocky, we are going to get started with farming. Yeah? And look at my, um, my tribe size. 40 and we are year 4. So, this goes back to what I keep saying that roughly 10 members per one full gaming year. Because your nature can keep up with that and your farms can keep up with that. Yeah? So, yeah, and until next time, have fun and take care. Leave it up.